this is the Chesop board. You know, you can have a phone, and you can have a smartphone, and you can have a chess board, or you can have a smart chess board. This, inside this, is a smart chess board. Not only is it smart, it is the most advanced of its kind in the world. Let's take a look. So first, we take off the lid, and here we have the chessboard. And this is not a proper unboxing, as you can see this is used. This is because I have used this on the channel for almost a year. I have made many, many videos with this amazing board, but I have never showed you all it can do and in this video in this video i want to show you all this amazing thing can do so let's see what we else have in the box we put this aside then we have usb charger cable this is literally just a usb c cable you probably have a million of those but that is what is used to charge the board and of course they include one then we have the pieces of course black pieces of course white pieces and notice yes two queens for each side um, because if you promote a pawn to a queen uh, on a normal chess set, you will have to take a rook that has been captured and inverted if you already have a queen. And of course, on a high-end premium uh, chess sets, you don't want to do that, so it comes with an extra queen. And then there's just some a list of device features. This should have been turned this way. And, and just, you know, some documentation, not really super important. What is really super important is what is inside. This, what makes this so special. And uh, in order to find out, we should uh, turn it on, don't you think? Let's get this nice and centered and let's turn it on wow. the first time I saw that I was like okay that is quite cool so as you can see the squares can light up in different colors that is because there is some technology inside this that allows it to understand many different things really and show them to you in various ways so let me demonstrate one of those okay so so first we put up the pieces you can see rook knight bishop king queen and bishop And the, P, the lights turn off, indicating that the board recognizes the piece. It flashes a couple of times there, just to show, okay, we know that we are now in the starting position. Okay. Okay, so I just changed the lighting, the lighting, the lighting just a little bit, so that um, for this first part of the demonstration, you can see um, the moves more clearly. And it is a chess computer we have here. So of course you can play against the computer. That is sort of the baseline. You can also do all sorts of other stuff. We will get to that. But let's just say that you want to play against the computer on this board. 
here that's you that's just a little icon there so we say white is played by a human and over here we can say we can play against the ai we could also so this is the level of the ai not going to play against it on such strength but you could also play against the human i'll show that later but let's just say we're going to play against the ai so i make a move pawn to e4 and it indicates the response it wants to make i'll try to go for a quick uh checkmate just to have a quick demonstration here bishop c4 but it it defends so let's say that that i want to have a little bit of help then i can of course i can get that little bit of help from the board it can be very useful for practicing so i'll just press this say now i'm on help level one help level two help level three and so now when i touch a piece it will say green moves those are good moves and blue moves are okay moves and a, a red move as you can see here that would be a blunder that would be a mistake so let's say i want to play pawn to d4 the machine captures and probably i can capture with the queen yes that's a green move and you can play against the board like this now there is a check that's there's also a way to indicate that with a little red there um, so that's of course one way to use the chessboard now let's say that uh, you are playing against your spouse or one of your friends or somebody on this chessboard and let's say that you are quite a bit uh, stronger than them because you watch ASMR chess videos you watch this channel so you'll know many good tricks and they don't so let me change I'll just for fun I'll just continue with this position because you can do that I'll change the AI I'll change it to also be a human and I'll say the human can get level 2 help so I'll give uh, level 2 help to uh, to the black pieces here uh, to the player with the black pieces and you can mess around with what level of help uh, you need or your opponent needs like do they need to only be shown blunders that okay don't do this move that's a red move but everything else is just blue you can just choose or do you want to have green moves to indicate good moves just play around with it it's a perfect way to equalize also if you're playing against a child you know and also for children of course it helps so much with learning uh, how the pieces move that it just lights up that's actually why uh, Jeff the guy who makes them that's why he <laughs> he told me uh, that uh, he was playing he was trying to teach his daughter and he was just he's an engineer and he was just looking at the board he was like this square should light up and then he because he's an engineer he invented this board um and i'll just i'll just uh, turn all the way down here so now i'm just on level one so that would be you the very strong asmr chess viewer and you are you don't need any help you just can just see all the legal moves but um but black can get all sorts of help okay so that is one way to use this uh, this chessboard i go back to the normal uh, lighting and i hope hope you will be able to see the the different colors and and how they look okay back at the normal lighting here um now let's take out the phone and uh, let's try to play online against somebody on leeches let's see and i should do a full disclosure here by the way and tell you uh, first of all that this is not a review i am not able to give an unbiased review of this chessboard and i will tell you why it is because I 
have I am working not for Bright Labs who makes the board but with them in that they have given me an affiliate link that um, will give you 10% discount if you buy it there's a promo code also that you need to use and it, it's in the description of this video so you can get this 10% discount but then I will make some money also if you buy the board and that means that no matter how hard I how hard I try to be you know objective and fair there will always be uh, you will always be able to say well that I'm biased so that is why this is not a review it's just a demonstration um, it's just a demonstration okay okay and here let's just put that on screen we have the chess up app that comes with the board and you can do a lot of things here you can go down here and learn and get, get uh, all sorts of learning uh, exercises and um, and lectures and tutorials but let's just first try to uh, play so let's do a new game and let's say you can see I can play against the AI and down here you can see I can go all the way up to ELO 3000 that is because my friend that when you are connected by the way via Bluetooth it just works so smoothly by the way uh, to the app here and you can see I'm connected up there uh, now the chessboard gets access to stockfish which is the strongest chess program in the world and that is why you can play against the AI you can play against the board now uh, at an extremely high level superhuman level even um, but let's say I want to play you can also do OTB that means over the board and that means that you can also get the stockfish recommendations for playing against your friend or you can play online and let's say I want to play on Lee Chess uh, one of the best chess websites and I can just play five minutes plus five minutes against someone random I can be white black or I'll be a random color and I'll just uh, say tab random game and it will find an opponent for me okay so here I'm okay, playing against somebody called TB top and they play this uh, G4 move that Mike Bassman used to play it's just you can see how easy it is I'm playing against somebody who's on the other side of the world I'm on a real chess board I can play with time I can play without time I can play rated I can play unrated the person I'm playing against is just using leeches um, which is just like they're just sitting on their computer or their phone um, of course I can't get the um, I can't get the the, the board to help me with um, you know uh, showing showing what's a good move and what's not a good move because that would be cheating so I can't do that but I can play on a beautiful chess board against a stranger on the internet um, which I really like now um, let me just uh, pause the presentation here to just make this uh, so a, little, a little bit of a, like a normal ASMR chess video because I'll just play this game you can skip ahead uh, if you want to to the next part of the demonstration or you can see if I will be able to win this chess game here um, this opening looks quite bizarre looks weird what white is doing they're moving their pawns so much um I mean I can castle here and now I should be having a I should have a very good game uh, I have control of the center both knights out bishop out this bishop is on a good diagonal even though it hasn't moved king is safe rook is developed so okay here comes the attack and 
not particularly concerned. I'll just go for F2. Um, go for F2. Coordinating with the knight and the rook. How will my opponent deal with that? Um, this move, of course, also attacks the knight, uh, the pawn with the knight and the queen so that I can actually sacrifice the knight and capture here because if they take the knight I have queen g3, queen f2 mate. I may not be made immediately because the king may be able to get out but there should be a very strong attack there. So do you think I can win this game? considering if they want to capture the knight it looks very dangerous if they don't well that is even more dangerous so that is check and um, there is uh, only one move that doesn't lose immediately and that is that one and then we go check now there is literally only one move that is that one now I'm thinking we should be quite close to checkmating um, so how can we how can we finish this off if we could play knight f2 of, of course our queen is on f2 here but knight f2 would fork the queen and the king how about about just developing nah it doesn't really work okay we capture the bishop they capture with the knight that threatens our queen so we move our queen here now they really should take the knight i think um, they do but of course that allows us to get in with this check driving king closer to our pieces and we should be fairly close to checkmate that is check you have to go back now okay one well, goes forward now there must be a checkmate somewhere close let's sacrifice some more pieces let's sacrifice the bishop with this check okay it goes here ignore not it uh, he he goes there or oh, she or oh, they um we don't know um, so check it should be pretty close um, how about, how do we finish this game? Okay, let's just capture here, let's just make some sensible moves. It's, um, it's weird because I'm in sort of presentation mode, I'm thinking about to how to present the chessboard, so I'm not, I'm not sure I'm playing particularly well. <laughs> um, now, they are not threatening anything but in particular with that move so let's just go here threaten discover check um, i must have missed a million chances in this game um, but i'm pretty sure i still have a very good position probably winning this okay they come here with the knight uh, we'll just chop that off so they will have to recapture that which they do we're just trying to march on with our pawns here we are getting closer and closer now queen f3 in conjunction with knight c4 um, should be quite good okay they attack us like this we could play Ang Pesang 
um, which I see queen f3 check king let's just do the young person let's check they capture like this um, let's try to get the king out of the, in the open check so we can use our rooks here check here check that let's take the pin piece get the knight in there so they will have to defend the pin piece somehow some way or not okay so we capture it it should be just a mob up job now but We do have the king sort of on the ropes a little bit here. That's actually plundering the queen, but it's probably also plundering checkmate. Like so, and then you get the cool animation. That was actually why I was so keen to, <laughs> to finish the game, or well, even though the game was a bit of a mess, just to show that checkmate uh, animation there. I think that's quite cool. Now, let's uh, let's check out some other things you can use this board for. Uh, before we go further, we should of course note that uh, that it stores all the games you play. If you're connected to the phone, it stores them on your phone, so you can review them, you can anima analyze them, learn from them. Um, but let's uh, let's do something else. Let's go here and learn. And then you can, of course, learn about how the queen moves or whatever. Um, but let's let's go something a little more advanced. Um, let's go to novice here, and let's practice a queen versus pawn breakthrough. So it uh, it gives us a little text. It says summary. Even when the opponent's pawn is only one move away from promoting, the queen is powerful enough to stop it, then deliver checkmate with the help of the king. Learn the winning technique in this lesson. Lesson requirements. Start with a clear board and make sure the A1 square is on your left. Okay. So, clear the board. Now, let's get, uh, these are a little noisy, I think, the pieces. Now, the A1 square is not on my left, but it is on your left. So that will have to do. Start lesson. And then you can see, then you can see that it wants us to place some pieces. So we put a white king on B8, as the a white queen on H8. A black king on d2 and a black pawn on e2 so so let's see this is what she tells us to do in this case the pawn is moving towards us so the pawn is one move away from queening so from king and queen versus king checkmates we know that the queen alone is not enough to checkmate a king so definitely here the queen alone is not enough to win versus a king and a pawn so we will need the assistance of our king there's one important question that we constantly need to ask ourselves, which is, can my opponent queen the pawn? If the answer is yes, then we cannot be bringing our king. We need to stop our opponent from queening the pawn. So let's take a look at a pattern which will help you understand this concept better. First, we will need to bring our queen closer. Let's start by playing queen to d4 check. Okay, so she's helping us here. So this move here, of course, checks the king. And when the king is in check, there's no way to move the pawn to make a new queen. So let's do the check. So now our opponent has several options. The king can either go on the c-file or to go on e1. 
It makes no sense for our opponent's king to voluntarily play to e1, because the king on e1 will be blocking the path of the e2 pawn. So if you think about it from our opponent's point of view, our opponent wants to constantly make a threat of queening their pawn. So in this instance, the king will go to c2. Okay, so the best move here, king c2. Now let's see what the technique is. Whenever we see that the king and the pawn have separated from each other, we don't need to check our opponent's king. We can attack the pawn. In this case, we will play queen to e3. Uh -huh. So here we are learning that now they can't... Uh, if we play queen e3, they can't make a new queen themselves, because you'll just capture it. Um, so they, we are forcing them to come back with the king to protect the pawn now. So now the pawn cannot queen because the queen will capture it, so now the king goes to d1. Yes, as we discussed, the king goes here to protect. And now again, when we ask ourselves, can our opponent's pawn queen, the answer is yes, the pawn is threatening to queen, so it's not the time for us to bring our king. So whenever our opponent's pawn is threatening to queen, we can do one of the few things. We can either pin it, or we can check the king, or as we did the move before, attack the pawn and stop it from queening. So in this case, we will play queen to d3 check. Let's play queen d3, and I think I understand now what's going on. When we play this check, we are still threatening the pawn, so the king will have to, it can't go to c1, because then we can capture the pawn win easily, so the king will have to go in front of the pawn, and then it can't queen anymore. So check. And this is a very useful check, because we are both checking the king and attacking the pawn. So the king cannot separate from the pawn because we will capture it, so the king is forced to go in front of the pawn. And whenever the king goes in front of the pawn, now it's our turn to bring our own king. So let's go ahead and play king to c7. Aha, uh -huh, so now we advance with the king. So our opponent has two options, king to either f2 or f1. Again, it doesn't make sense to go to f1 because of the pin, so there will be no threat. So black will play king f2. Mm -hmm, because if we go to f1, we still can't queen, because then we would put a king in check, so king f2. And now the answer to the question, does my opponent want to queen their pawn, is yes. So let's pin the pawn by playing queen to d2. Uh -huh, yes, that makes a lot of sense. We will... Here now you can't attack. If the king goes to f3, we will immediately put the queen in front of the pawn. If we're able to accomplish this, then it's a very easy win. Because a king cannot attack a queen, so eventually we will bring our king closer and capture the pawn, and black can never ever threaten to queen this pawn. Instead, black will play king to f1. This all makes sense. Threatening to queen the pawn, so we will check from f4. Makes sense to go to e1, so king goes to g2. Mm -hmm. And again, pawn and the king have separated, so we attack by playing queen to e3. Mm -hmm. This king to f1. Now we just use this pattern again and queen again. F3 check. Check it has to go Checking here. The king and attacking the pawn. King goes to e1. Now the king is in front of the pawn again, and once again we bring our own king. So we play king to d6. Yeah, and here we can, of course, we are. We can check right here because we are protected by the king. And our king is supporting the queen. So after king to e1, we will play king to f3. So again, a bit of a tedious process, but the pattern is very clear. We ask ourselves, can my opponent pawn queen? And the answer is yes. We either check the king, pin the pawn, or if the king and pawn are separated, we attack the pawn. So that was a very important chess technique. And as you can see, they have, um, they have there are three of those for end games right now. Let's see, on intermediate, now there are no one here. Oh, why 
is that expert no one here master no one here that is simply because they haven't made it yet they're still uh, all of this when I got the board there wasn't even this function but because it's a smart board that you can update I will if you buy it I will encourage you to always do the firmware updates because it um, it allows you to get all the new cool features they are uh, adding so they are all the time adding new stuff and uh, the newest thing is this uh, learning function here okay so here is a different thing you can do um, let's say that you have some position that um, you have maybe played a game with somebody that you want to import into the machine into the chess, uh, chess board or something like that um, here's what you can do so let's get the let's get the uh, phone recording back on the screen here so what you can see here is I have this Morphe puzzle Chick Maiden 2 puzzle uh, and I'm this is I just put this up on Lee Chess I'm going to copy the FEN string okay so now I have I've started a new game and I have this position loaded so what I can do is I can uh, I can put it in here paste it there and say load and then it says okay we have some pieces here black pieces and white pieces so the king is here the pawn is here and there and there and there and there is the king and here is the rook okay so this you you have now input you have now imported rather this um, position and um, it could be from a game it could be a puzzle and then you can use all the board's features for instance let me just uh, get a lot of help here to help solve this uh, checkmate puzzle created uh, in 1855, I think, by Paul Morphy. So, is it a king move? No, they are all red. It's also not a pawn move that is red. How about a rook move? It is a rook move, only one. And it's not capturing. It's putting the rook here. Now I have said, the AI to play against me. Now the AI chooses to capture the rook. It could also have chosen to move the bishop. It actually doesn't matter because capture the rook like so. This is uh, this is one of the two moves that are possible, and then we can checkmate with the pawn. Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the comments. Comments comments if you can find out how to checkmate if the bishop moves instead okay okay so here we are again there are many more things you can do with the board they actually just uh, added a feature so you can play checkers on it uh, this is however ASMR chess not ASMR checkers and, uh, and there's there are more chess things you can do so here you can see knight that's a green move, can you see that? And that is because right now I'm in an opening explorer uh, mode, so that is that means that's a theoretical move, that's a book move, and you can explore different openings with the board. Um, and I, I hope to see them build more on that because I think it's an excellent way to use the board. And another thing I know they are working on is um, master games. So you'll be able to, when, when they release the feature, to say, okay, I want to go over that cool Capablanca game that ASMR Chess did in his newest video. And then it will, if E4 is the first move, it will show you that. And then you play that and then it will show you the next move. And then you can go over famous games. Um, and, uh, and then of course the learn function here can see they're going all the way up to master so uh, but they don't have they haven't got it 
implemented yet. They are working on it. Um, so yeah, I think I'll, I'll end this session by just playing because I was a little, I wasn't so happy with my play in the game where I showed uh, how you can play online. So I'll see if I can do better play online um, against somebody random in a, in a quick game. Okay, so we found an opponent and we have the black pieces. We are facing e4. We're playing the Sicilian defense with c5, knight f3, d6. Maybe we'll get into the dragon. Looks like it. Pawn to d4, c5 takes d4, there's an open Sicilian, knight takes on d4, knight f6. This is all theory, this is just theory, this is theory, theory. And uh, our opponent is rated, they're called Zedderin, and they're rated 1715. And we'll just get into the dragon setup. And I have a video on this, and I'm actually considering doing a new video on the hyper-accelerated dragon. Okay, bishop e2, that's advanced stuff. That is one of the more tricky lines. Uh, bishop g7, we play against this. Uh, because if a Sicilian dragon is cool, how about a hyper-accelerated dragon? Okay, they, they castle short, which is, I'm going to do that as well, but that is one of the less ambitious moves they could play. Um, so they're probably a pretty strong chess player, also with a rating of 1700. Um, and they probably just want to figure out what, what kind of dude I am uh, before they, they show their plan. Okay, knight, d5, I'm not particularly cons concerned with that, I play knight c6, um, if they want to play knight takes knight, I'll play bishop takes knight and I'll be very happy. Um, and if, if this, this knight takes this knight, it's also not a problem, we will recapture with the pawn, like so. And they capture here and I capture there so now all the knights all the knights are off and they play pawn to c3 that means they want to move their bishop out I guess I'll just play pawn to c5 um, if they play some bishop f3 or queen d5 I'll play Rook b8, otherwise I'll play rook, uh, bishop b7. Okay, they play bishop c4, good square for the bishop. Bishop b7, good square for my bishop as well. They seem to want to exchange the bishops. Let's defend our bishop. So this is really... Like this board, of course, has all these features. I, I, I know I promised I wanted to show you all of them, but I, at least I, I showed you most of them. Um, but this is the, like this is the best one to my mind. That any time you can find a real human opponent um, and play with them on a physical chessboard. Any time that. That is beautiful to me. This queen move. Uh, let's just snap this bishop off. Bishop takes bishop after they play queen. Um, a5. Let's just be very, very sensible. Queen b6. I don't know. It looks like, it feels like they are pretty strong, our opponent. So I'm pretty happy with just having this um, quiet positional game nobody really has an advantage uh, I'll just try to play very solidly and see if I can uh, 
if I can get them out of their comfort zone because before they get me out of my comfort zone. They're having a good think here. They're really thinking about what to do. Okay, so they want to move the bishop. I think that's a bit of a mistake they did there because I may be able to just after rook b1 capture on uh, on c3 and they couldn't capture my bishop because the rook was pinned but after they play bishop h6 their idea I'll just go back with my own bishop um, defend the exchange or they uh, they will exchange the bishop but I was thinking they would defend the exchange of uh, bishop for for rook which would be of course a bit of a problem for me now they play pawn to g3 um let's play pawn to a5 so now that we are ahead a pawn in the material count we would very very much like i think to try to exchange queens by force so they play rook e1 we play rook b7 in order to defend our pawn on b7 and then if they don't move their queen which they didn't they play rook e3 we are going to play queen b4 so now we are sort of forcing an exchange here going to recapture with the pawn towards the center we play a takes b4 they pile up the attack uh, let's just play uh, rook e1 after they played uh, we play rook e8 after they played rook a, a e1 they play h4 we play h5 double up uh, they let's see we play f5 so I want to get my king to f6 mm, okay doesn't allow that but let's play king f7 then uh, trying to free up this other rook here um, and they may have good chances for a draw uh, we are only up a single pawn and our rook is tied up to the e7 pawn uh, they play f3 let's play rook a7 so that we are at least looking at a2 even though it is defended okay they play g4 Let's capture this. They recapture. Are we just capturing that? I don't think so. I think we are playing rook h8 instead. Okay, they capture like this. Let's recapture that. And now I may have them tied up to a pawn. I may. Okay. Let's defend. It's a very nice sort of positional game, this. They attack with the king. Now this rook is free to move. And uh, I actually really enjoy this game. This is kind of nice. This is kind of nice. Going in with the king, so we get to activate the rook, rook g8. I think they should have tried something more ambitious there, because if we are allowed to play rook g4, which we aren't, but maybe this, rook g1, because now it's unclear how they can even move okay they go back with this rook um, 
So can I move? That's the new question. I'll try rook g6 with a rather strange idea of playing pawn to e5. Pawn takes on Pesang, rook takes. Oh, wow. An exchange of rooks. Rook takes rook. King takes rook. Pawn e5. That should be good. Pawn takes on Pesang is the only move that's not immediately losing than king takes. But now our position is much, much easier to play. We have this situation over here with this pawn known as a backward pawn, can't move. We have a solid pawn chain. We only really need to defend the our own the, the our own backward pawn. It's not a backward pawn, but the the one closest to me. <laughs> And um, now we can try to make some progress. Okay, that is a very bad move. We will just capture that. And uh, then I don't have to prove that this uh, in game was winning, even though it is, uh, of course, winning. Uh, our opponent played very well. That was a very, very game and then they made a huge blunder that may be a mouse slip and, and you can of course uh, try you know fumble a little bit and signal the wrong move to the board but one advantage with this board is there are no mouse slips because you have no mouse now our opponent uh, they have not lost the game uh, yet even though they will and they have not resigned the game so what they're doing here is something that I I don't really recommend. They are running out their time um, because they are frustrated. Um, so they are making me wait um, some one and a half minutes uh, before I have like technically won the game. Um, but but um, first of all, you're not really accomplishing anything if you do that. Second of all, it's not like it's a big problem for me. Like, even if I just quit the app and, and they somehow won the game because I didn't want to wait, it's not. I played the game to have an enjoyable experience. And now the game is over and I had that enjoyable experience. And I mean, there's just no point to it. You're not making... I, I know it feels like you're getting revenge on your opponent when you do something like that but it's not really your opponent's fault even so maybe you shouldn't be getting revenge on your opponent maybe you should uh, look at yourself and say okay i made some random mistake uh is is there something i need to practice do i need to better myself or was it just a random mouse slip uh and if it was i mean you know that happens just happens. Even Magnus Carlsen has made mouse slips. Uh, like he blundered a piece uh, against Nakamura. Here we have the checkmate animation. Okay, so, well, that's the video. Um, of course, there is the link in the description. I encourage you to, if you want to buy the board, uh, go check out some other reviews from some unbiased sources, uh, or maybe also just watch some other videos I've done with the board. And take care. And I hope I will see you in the next video.